Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Cloud the Tank again. Uh, right now I'm going to be uh, showing the, um, a video on the, um, on the Famicom system that I just finished repairing. Um, um, I didn't go through, uh, I didn't make a video of going through all the steps that I did to get this thing back up running again since I accidentally did something. So but I'm going to show you the insides of the system itself and all what you need to replace for what I read up on the internet. So this is the video we're going to be showing you. <clears throat> this is the um, inside of the um, Famicom itself. This is the basically the Japanese version of Nintendo, which is for Famicom. It was a short name for it for um, Family Computer System. And you can see I got the um, thing torn apart. This is the uh, back of the bottom of it. See, so it shows all that stuff right here. It's a uh, HV HVC-001 uh 1983 so um one thing that's funny with this thing here that the um, model number on the casing itself is actually older than what the motherboard is on here um <clears throat> the motherboard on here is actually a lot, a lot newer for some other reason I'm not sure Japan did that on purpose or what it is but apparently since um, 1983, they've been updating the, the board itself as time went by. Because, um, I'm going to flip it over. You can see it's got 1989 on it. So, it's got like a different motherboard in it than what the year says. And that's for the um, power supply. It's uh, 1988. So, so, it's kind of awkward. 1988 uh, video and power board with the main motherboard that's made in 1989 with a casing that was created in 1983. So <clears throat> um, these are uh, some of the microchips that's inside of the system itself. There's a couple of sharp chips in there. Some um, uh, there's a phone company that actually goes by that label again. I forgot. I think it was Motorola. Goes by that symbol. There's some Toshiba chips in here. There's this uh, this guy here. Uh, you can see it's got a lot of stuff in here. And there's your uh, your reset button. That's for the reset. This is the um, cartridge slot where the um, game goes in. This is the system itself. Um, this is one part I just replaced. That's in here. It's a um, a chip. I just replaced. So, um, see, it's a LM eight eight uh, seven eight zero five chip. Uh, bought this thing at uh, Radio Shack, and I put some new thermal paste on here so to put the old one out. Um, this is um, this is the old chip that was in there. It um, fried it when I accidentally did something. One recommendation whenever using a power supply for the uh, Famicom system itself, if you're going to use a Radio Shack type, you have to be careful with it. For these things here, it's if you're using a Radio Shack power supply that's got interchangeable ends, make sure you do not place the <laughs> make sure you don't push the uh, pins backwards when putting the adapter onto this thing when you're using a 10 full power supply from Radio Shack. Be careful, because um, I did that once on this thing, and this is and this is pretty much what happened. This right here fried fuse. This is um, this fuse right here. Um, let's see if I can get the camera to focus on it at all. Try to get the focus here. Let's see if I can focus it here at all. There. 50, uh, looks like an SOC 1.5 amp fuse. I replaced it that, so. Which I, um. I bought some fuses from Hong Kong, which is these right here. These actually are 1.5 fuses. I got a whole press home, so. 
And of course, since we don't have any electronic stores around here, besides Radio Shack, it's kind of hard to buy only one quality, so I always have to buy tons, like these capacitors, for example. And I replaced one of these capacitors that's in the console itself. That also blew up, which is this guy right here. He blew up and spread it acid everywhere when you actually put the thing backwards, so. So. These are the three main culprits that really fried when I accidentally put the power adapter backwards. So be careful when you do that. Would you have to replace all three of these to get this thing back up and going again? Oh, I'll show you with the um, little things off where everything is located at. So just give me a second now. Get to that. All right, this is um, pretty much the inside of it. I still got this human crown giant shield in here, but I can't take this off. So. I just got to leave it on here for now, but um, there's the there's the uh, chip that's still attached, and as you can probably maybe notice that there's a small gap right here that separates the two boards, and the only thing that's holding it together is this weird chip that's stuck here. That's about the only thing that actually holds these two together: this board and this board. So, and that capacitor that blew up the. 6.5 volts at 1,000 micro, uh, microfarads sitting right there, brand new. That's installed. And for the fuse, um, you can see there's a little fuse symbol right there. Watch that's on the back side. That's the fuse I installed. It's sitting right there. So it's um, only soldered on one side, of course. So if um, you ever have to take these things out, you have to just desolder. Um, this point and this point over here, which is attached to something else right here, which um, I think the capacitor is attached right there. No, these two right here is capacitors attached to. And there's a capacitor between those two, and that's the one you have to replace. So, so if you accidentally end up frying your um, soup, your Famicom system, accidentally. Um, the whole entire thing might be all right since um, it has a fuse right there that will actually help save it from being fried at all. So the Famicons are repairable, and you can get parts for it. But as for the rest of it, if the rest of this fries, then you're out of luck. Sorry. So make sure you just have to hope that none of this is fried at all. So and also when running it on your um, TVs, you're running through the coax. Run it on channel 96 on cable and an LCD TV. So. But, um, and of course, if you still want to use the light gun that goes to the port in the front here, I would definitely recommend a tube TV, not an LCD, because LCDs do not um, generate any um, wave uh, wavelengths, unlike a tube, which you'll see videos where um, it shows a tube like this, and it goes um, back and forth, back and forth to create a picture. Well, the light gun actually tells a little laser it's gonna shoot in one spot so whatever spot you're gonna shoot and that's where that laser is gonna point for just a blip second so um, so if you ever want to use the light gun on this or the American Nintendo or any old consoles best use a two tight TV don't use LCD I tried it once it does not work LCD just only projects on the side with chips that are attached to a specific screen to have um, colors built into the screen itself that'll come together so, but, um, uh, I was, uh, yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> what do I, okay, <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, but, um, yeah, that, that's the Famicom actually totally repaired, and I'll show you when they put this other sort of thing back together, and plus, just to make things easy, these two plugs right here, they're controlled, Controller 1 and Controller 2 ports, they will disconnect, so if in case you need to do work, you can actually disattach these things, so that way you can um, deal with these. And also, you can also change these in case the controllers are broke somewhere, so you can easily change, your, change them. Because unlike the American NES, these things run by pins, and Controller 1, I think, is bigger than Controller 2, and um, pin size. So, but, that's the inside of the Femicon system. Thank you.